When you first launch Adobe Premiere Pro, you will see windows such as this, where you have no projects, or you have the ability to open a new project. Recent projects may be listed on the upper left hand side. In our case, this is the first time the application is being launched, so there are no projects listed, so we'll select a new project. Here you will have this window, and you will see his video rendering and playback. Renderer, I don't have any options here. I'm on a laptop, so I don't have any options of any other type of cards or anything else that I can use uh, for my machine, so I have no ability to change this. Video display format, time code, if you don't want to use that, you can use any of these options. Audio, the same thing, different samples. And you have the capture. Again, different options for different items. Location, select your location. If you happen to be in a laptop, such as I am, and you have a external drive, you may want to utilize that external drive. If not, if you have enough space on your drive and you know how to manage your files, which is very, very important, then you can go ahead and use this option and manage your files accordingly so you can clear them so you continue to have space after you're finished working with your project. And of course the name. So I will go ahead and name this Sample 1. And I'll click on OK. The next window that comes up will be regarding our sequence. By default, DVNTSC is set up for television and you will see here that it says editing, firewire, iLink and so on and so forth. Again this is usually the standard for television. Uh, right now though the standard is being changed to 720p but uh, the footage that we're going to work with here is going to be 1080p at 30 frames per second or 29.97 to be exact. So I'm going to change my setting. Here you'll have settings that are usually the default. If you have an AJ card or a Blackmagic card, you'll have additional settings. I will go ahead and select on digital DSLR. Let's see, and I'll select 1080p and I'll select DSLR 1080p 30. I'm going to name my sequence and once again, I'll name this practice one and up here on the upper right hand side of preset description you'll see it says for most DSLR formats 1920 by 1080 which is the footage that I do have 16 by 9 progressive HD video which I do have and it's 2997 frames per second well, again, which I also do have the audio rate is usually 48 kilohertz I do not have any audio on the uh, videos that I am selecting as far as I know so this will be just fine and I'll select on OK well actually before I do that I'll select on settings you'll see the editing mode again you can go ahead and change this to whatever you like time base again whatever you may have different and you'll have your pixels and fields and so on and so forth so whatever type of footage you have you may want to find out beforehand so you, these settings can be set up correctly if you do not find a setting that matches your camera or your footage you can create your own and then down here on the bottom left hand side you can select on save preset and name that according to whatever it is you have I also go to this tab here where it says tracks so you'll see by default I will have three video tracks if you wish to have more tracks go ahead and select on this and you'll have by default more tracks every time you open your project now I'll go ahead and select on OK and Premiere Pro will launch now here you will have four windows and uh, in Adobe you actually call these panels so you'll have your project panel on the bottom 
uh, left hand side you have your source panel on the top left hand side you'll have your program panel on the upper right hand side and your sequence panel on the bottom right hand side you are able to click in between and resize these and of course this will be according to your preference here in the center you will have your tool palette or tool panel I will go ahead and import some footage so I will go to the file menu import and I'll select a drive or a folder where I may have footage so let me select my drive and select my folder and here are my shots that I will use I'm going to select all of them so I will select the very first one hold the shift key and select the very last one and I'll select on import there will be one audio track involved here and here are my videos uh, thumbnails now there are different views available to you I'm going to go ahead and open this up a little larger so I can show this and here on the bottom left hand side of my project pane um, I will have my ability to change this to a list view and in this pane or panel you will see my items listed alphabetically and they do have labels if you right click on any of these items you will see here that you do have the ability to select different items for these you can also select on the items themselves to see what you have available to you so for example if I select on name this will change the order or alphabetical order same thing here so feel free to explore when it comes to these items you will see the icons regarding the um, videos you'll see the icon for audio and you'll see the icon for your sequence you can also enlarge these by coming down to the bottom left hand side and opening this here or I should say you selecting on the scrolling item and scroll to the right by left clicking and holding on it and again you can change this to the thumbnail view same thing you can select on this button here and left click and drag and you'll make these very very large if that's what you prefer once you have this set to your preference you can go ahead and scroll your footage so if I were to pass over my shot I'm, I'm not clicking down on it I'm just simply passing over with the cursor and as I do so it will go ahead and scroll through or scrub through the footage nothing on the audio now the thing about this is that in Adobe Premiere you can actually select on it once you do that you do get a playhead and you can in fact scroll through it and set in and out points here in the project panel so if I wanted to start here let's say I can type the letter I for endpoint and move this to this point and select the letter O for an out point same thing for this shot 
I can do the same thing. Now the advantage of this is that you do not have to double click or select the shot itself to see it in a bigger view or to select to make in and out points. You can go ahead and make your in and out points here very quickly. And this is especially helpful if you're trying to create a rough cut and you already have a general idea of what your shots will look like. So again, I will select my in and out points based on what I would like my shot to be. Also, this affords you to have enough handle for transitions. So since you already put in and out points before and after the end of each clip rather than starting at the very beginning or very end, you know for a fact that once you drop into your sequence, you will in fact have handles. Now if I wish to see this in the source panel, I can go ahead and double click on it and it will be available there. And again, if I had audio and I were to press play, I will hear it. Now to press, to use the play button, you can select here on the project source panel and select on the play button. You could press your space bar. You could press the letter L. Now, the more times you press the letter L, let me go back here. The more times you press the letter L, the faster it will go. You could press the letter K to stop, and you could press the letter J to rewind or go backwards. Same thing if you were to press it many times, it will go faster and faster. If I press down and hold the letter K and the letter L at the same time, and you keep holding it, it will play in slow motion. Same thing for the J and the K keys. Letter I to put an endpoint, letter O to put an out point. Once I'm ready to edit this, I can select the period key and it will perform an overwrite edit into my sequence. I will select Command Z or Control Z if you're on the PC to undo. Once again, I'll go ahead and press, I'll make an overwrite edit. To do an overwrite edit by dragging this clip, I can select it and just drag it down into the timeline. Now when I do that, I get this message. This clip does not match the sequence settings. Change sequence to match that so you can say yes or no. And I'll select on no. I will keep my existing settings. Now if you need to have additional items brought in, you can select the media browser and select on the drive and then you can simply select on a folder and you will see that you'll have additional items there available to you to bring into your project. Also you can select on info. So here for example it the program told me that my footage did not match my settings. So I'll come back here and it says 24 frames per second or actually 23.97 rather than 30 or 29.97 that I selected. So this is mix and match which most likely you'll have the same experience as you'll have different shots from different cameras and you need a program to go ahead and allow you to mix formats, which most programs do, but Adobe does a great job of allowing you to do that without having to render.
as you can see here I can get hit and play this in my sequence and it plays just fine without having to render the shot so once I have that selected I can go ahead and select to go to the next point so I'll select in the program or record panel and I'll select on this button here which allows me to go to the out point I'll select here to go to the endpoint. So if I were to go here and go Shift O, it goes to my up point. Shift I goes to my end point. And that's how you go ahead and begin to start editing or create a rough cut in Adobe Premiere CS6. Thanks for watching. This is Louis Sierra for Chesapeake Systems.